Hi everybody, welcome to video tutorial number 13, Sampling, Grooving, and Buffering. In our last tutorial, we had gotten our super cycler working, and I'm just going to take a look at it here. Using the poly object, we got six super cyclers running. They are separate patchers, saved separately, but then uh, six instances called into work in here and the poly distributes to them. So today we're going to try the third method of making sound, major way of making sounds with uh, Max MSP and that is sampling. So let's clean up this window a little bit um, and make some room for it. So we'll uh, unlock our patcher as always and whoops let's let's leave that uh, easy DAC out and we'll do that shift command E or go get the encapsulate thing out of the menu and type P for patcher and then super cycler no don't type super cycler so type super duper cycler because we don't want to reuse that patch name just for confusion sake there we go, we got our super duper cycler. Look at that blue line just pops up there to keep us on the straight and narrow with our neatness. And let's move these receives and gates down here for the super duper cycler to use. I know it might seem like I clean up a lot, but it's just for future sanity. So we have our <clears throat> two gates down here and two voice uh, gate receivers and I'm gonna copy all four of them, option click on them and move them over here for our new patcher to use. And then I'm gonna hook them up the same way as these are which is an output coming from the uh, velocity or volume as you might care to think of it and that comes in the right hand inlet there. I know uh, we haven't uh, been doing this every day. Going from the left hand outlet of the frequency to the right hand inlet of the other gate. And now we are ready to start our next patcher. So type letter N, type the letter P for patcher. You could type patcher, but that would be a big waste of time. Space and a name, let's call it our super duper sampler. And as soon as you click on it, the super duper sampler pops up. Now you may notice that you can't connect to the super duper sampler yet because it has no inlets or outlets. That's because it is a sub patcher and we haven't made those inlets and outlets yet so let's just take care of that right away we'll just expand this make it as big as the page will fit and we'll go get some inlets and outlets let's get an inlet put it way up here out of the way option click on it and put another one over here way out of the way we'll get an outlet put it down here and do the same thing. Just click on one over there. I love these new blue lines in Max 6 that line everything up. It just how could it how could it be any better? There we go. Okay. So now we've got a patcher ready to go and just by the way, we could if we so desired um hook it up now. Um as you can see now we have two inlets and two outlets. So let's actually do it. We remember um, that we reserved um, gate three for this one. Uh, gate three was reserved for an unknown. Of course, I knew, but uh, and that's where we're going to go here. So we're going to come out of gate three into the frequency side of super duper sampler, and from gate three over here and go in the volume control side of super duper sampler and 
gee whiz, we've got so much room, why not move super duper sampler up here, at least for the time being? And then we'll just continue working on the other one. You can hit on an Apple command tilde and get your other window back up there. There it is again. And here we are, back in the subpatcher super duper sampler. So there's a couple items that we have to learn about to do this sampling. And the first one is buffer. So type the letter N, start typing buffer. It'll probably pop up there pretty quick. Notice there's this odd misspelling down here, buffer. Do not click on the buffer. We want a buffer and space and then name your buffer. What would you like to name it? Let's name it Ted. Hello Buffer Ted. There you are. And then we're going to send a message to Buffer Ted. Type the letter M and type R E A D. You don't even hardly have to type it before it fills it in. And now we'll just connect to Buffer Ted. Now some of you are probably thinking to yourselves, what happened to the lazy old John we used to know who would have just copied this out of a help file? Well, this is sufficiently complicated that I want to show you what everything is actually doing. So I'm going to close this, uh, excuse me, lock my patcher, and we're just going to do it step by step. So now we've got a buffer named Ted, and we are going to read a file into the buffer. A buffer is a place where a file a sound file is stored. So go to applications. I just type the letter M and then I get down to max six. I go over to examples. I go down to sounds. And let's pick something here that we can that we know what the sound is. And I think we all know what the sound of a cello is. And if you don't what a delight it'll be. And let's open that. And so now in Buffer Ted we have a cello. How do we know that there's a cello in Buffer Ted? We double click on Buffer Ted and up here we see the sound file that's in Buffer Ted. Alright Ted, good. Let's, we can close that, we don't have to worry about it. The cello is in Buffer Ted. However, unlocking our patcher, let's move Buffer Ted over here, out of the way. Don't get hurt. Okay. A buffer can't play a sound. We need a thing to play a sound, and so we'll type the letter N again, and we're going to type groove. Whoops. How do you spell groove? O, O. Okay, let's take a look at what pops up here. Groove duck. Well, that's interesting. That's actually groove inside another patcher, but here's the thing we want. Groove tilde. And so we click on that, <clears throat> hit the space bar, and you see it's asking for a buffer name. Guess what we're going to name it? Go ahead. Ted. That's right. Very good. I'm proud of you. Okay, so now we've got groove Ted here, and Groove Ted is going to be able to play what Buffer Ted has stored in him, but we're going to have to give Groove Ted a couple objects to be able to do that. Um, let's uh, use an easy DAC here. We know that um, our objects often need these just to make some sound. And then we're also, <coughs> excuse me going to want to gain control and I'm gonna make it horizontal just so it fits in there nicely there we go connect those up shift so I can do both of them whoops annoying and then we have to do two other things. Um, groove 
needs a signal to tell it how fast to play and sort of like a cycle. Remember our cycle object from before? But this object is called signal, so start typing signal. And actually, if you type signal, it won't work because short for signal is sig with a tilde. And then we're going to make a space, as we often do. And we're going to type 1.0. And for signal, 1.0 means normal. 1.0 is normal and anything else is not normal. It's either greater than 1 or less than 1. So now we just need to tell the groove to start playing. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, let's get a message going here. Type the letter M. You can type 0 <coughs> and that will tell Groove to start playing at zero milliseconds. Or you can type another message called start loop. And that will tell Groove to start playing a loop, start playing its loop. And its loop is only a loop, by the way, once you tell it to loop. And since I said it, now I'm forced to type another message called loop. And um, a P, a space, and a 1 will turn the looping function on. And a I guess I'll, I'm now forced to even go the next step, and that's to tell you how to turn it off in case you don't like it. So we'll uh, type in the message loop zero. There we go. And connect those. Well, that looks very nice. OK. And last but not least, we will stick some messages on up here, such as message 0.5, another message of 1. I'll tell you what, we'll put those up there just so we can do them quickly. And we'll just stick a float box up there so we can adjust it. and. Uh, Type the letter F for a float box. Hey, my keyboard's still playing over there. So nice. So there's the float box. Okay. Are we ready then? Let's type, let's get it to one and say, oh, turn our gain, gain control up and not too high and just see what happens. Did everyone hear that? Fantastic. So here's the question. Is 0.5 faster or slower than 1? Let's find out. Slower. And what if we were to make this into a 2? Now what? So what we've done then to reiterate here is we've loaded a sound into our buffer and we've got Groove over here to play it. We're sending Groove a signal, and it's going to play that at whatever speed um, we tell it to. Essentially, you're multiplying speed by whatever number you send into signal. So if you multiply by 1, it plays at the regular speed. Multiply by 2, it plays twice as fast, which results in it sounding twice as high. Right? So, whoops, let's get that back there twice as high. How about three times as high? Half as fast is nice and slow and low. So that's how it works and I'm gonna come back and show you how to hook it up in the next video. I will see you 
soon. Oops, I'm gonna, there we go. I'll see you in the next video.